So I've watched the run once. Uh, yeah, I've watched it once. I won't. I won't say anything about it yet. I know there's like a number of things to say about it, so I thought maybe it'd become something to put on stream, make a video out of, or something. There's a fair bit to talk about. I think. I think there's a fair bit to talk about. There's a lot of like strange things that happen and just interesting things. <clears throat> um, like it's a sub thirteen. Um, he uses 20 obsidian off of a like decent blind time so it's like expected for it to sub 13 like sub 13 should be extremely common something I've been saying for some weeks is that sub 13s should be super common like if you're resetting properly and you're trying to get 20 obsidian um, sub 13s should be like really common kind of like how uh, a while ago like we're talking months ago now but there was a time where uh, 19xx's like sub 20s were super common everyone was getting them um, like 21 minute times were pretty common at some point but I think 19xx's had this huge boom there's like loads of 15xx's a little while ago. Oh, and 17s. 17s and 15s were super common. And now there's a lot of 14s, but not like a tremendous amount. But I expect there's going to be a lot of sub-13s. So this is like one of the, the many sub-13s I expect. Um, I don't consider this to be like some crazy PB. Like, I don't think this is going to be the PB that Feinberg like has for ages, you know? Like there's some PBs where it, it it hits and you're like, yep, yeah, that's gonna that's gonna be their PB for like months, but I don't expect that at all. Um, just because nothing too crazy happens this run, nothing too crazy happens. Um, yeah. My speed run and my first ever sub thirteen. I'm super happy with this run, but I know I can do better. So if you want to watch me push for sub 11 and eventually world record, follow my Twitch. Links are in the description. Make sure to like and sub, and I hope you enjoy the run. Oh yeah, I got a, uh, I got permission from him because I do that. Like if I'm, if I'm gonna do an analysis on on someone, I nowadays at least I get permission. I used to not, but that was because it was world records. <laughs> I think I've always got permission for PV analyses, so. But world records, obviously, like anyone's gonna <laughs> you link that as content. But I got permission from it. Wow, dude! Wow! So war motion, bad tree proximity. Um, like. There's no chance for a lava pool or anything with this terrain. Like, the terrain's bad for a lava pool. Um, I don't want to have them too loud because it's not meant to be, like, me showing the video. It's just meant to be talking over the run. Yeah, so, war motion, shallow as well. So, this looks, like, just terrible. This looks like a terrible seed. Um, no chance for lava again. There's super, super low chance of any magma ravine. Um, yeah, it just looks terrible, considering the bad tree proximity as well. Like, anyone with a uh, multi-instance has probably already reset. Is my enter gonna be? That's not an enter. It actually is, is the crazy part. He's streaking for a totally an um, shipwreck on the coast, and he's found one. Because that was, like, the final out of the seed. When you don't have multi-instance, or if you're just, like, generally trying to milk every seed like he milks every seed um he's going for sub 15s and everything um so he's he's trying to get every every seed to work so he was just checking for one of his outs which was a shipwreck being right on the coast and then like using that you know rare proximity of the shipwreck to kind of carry the run to an enter
Heaps of iron. I'm gonna drown. Um, that drowning was avoidable. The food actually is pretty important right now. This food, it exists, but like rotten flesh is good food, but only if you like can overlap it with things. And in a fast run, you're probably not gonna overlap, overlap it a whole lot because like you want your rods to be fast, you want your, dr your trades to be fast and everything. Like food actually, well it's taking any kind of drowning damage is actually pretty important. This means he has to eat more in the future because if you take uh, how like if you take damage, your hunger goes down faster because it has to heal it back. So drowning like is actually a um, like an incremental time loss kind of. So he's got seventeen iron. Um, it's pretty standard. Because obviously 11 goes towards four lion tools in a bucket. And then from there, there's the spear iron. You've got the spear six iron. So what do you do with that? Most people make shears here. Getting building blocks is just massive. Like ripping a stack of leaves here sets you for the rest of the run and just saves a whole lot of time. Especially considering he's um, milking every seed. Um, like you only need blocks in bad seeds with bad terrain. Like if you have to bridge somewhere, obviously it's gonna be a slow seed because a faster seed is just gonna be, you run, right? Like, um, you don't have to bridge anywhere. You don't have to pillar up a hill or up a cliff or something like that. Um, and especially like you see in runs, um, people will be breaking like netherrack or soul sand or something. And that's really slow compared to leaves, where you get like a whole stack in like four seconds or five seconds. But you get like six netherrack a second, or no, it's less than that. <laughs> it's far less than that. You get like six netherrack. I don't know. You really don't get that much netherrack. So having shears is a really staple craft. Um, he does this craft, I think, just because it's flashy. The, this has no real benefit. The time that iron doors save over leaves is totally negligible. This saves on breaking one and a half logs. Um, but that's totally negligible. One and a half logs is nothing. Like you, you. So the iron door craft is standard. If you've got um, a shipwreck with not many logs in it, right? You've got half of a shipwreck, or it's one of the annoying like upside down shipwrecks or something, where it just takes a whole lot of time to get. Um, takes a whole lot of time to get the logs out of the shipwreck. That's when iron door crafts are massive, like really important. If you can craft iron doors in those runs. Because saving on one and a half logs is actually like a, it's a proper time save. Or even in these shipwreck runs, when you're trying to front load, whoops, when you're trying to front load, um, Iron Door obviously saves on um, planks, which means you've got beds, because that's, that's two whole beds worth of planks, right? Which is massive. But here, he's got log proximity, there's just no reason to make iron doors here at all. You trust that lava? I think he just did it because it's a, f a flashy idea. There's like minor um, downsides to having iron doors as well, but they don't matter. Like the only purpose of an iron door is for magma ravine portals that's the whole point and so you can make a magma ravine portal with the iron doors what's up dylan thanks for the raid um he hears lava underground so the iron door craft was completely useless now um not to mention like this ocean is so bad like he probably he would just send it right he ha happens to hear the lava 
Um, happens to hear the lava, so, but yeah, this is just a wasted craft. Normally the iron, like for most people, the iron just goes uncrafted in the inventory. So you could almost say at least he makes something, but I don't know, say he doesn't get like fire res or something, or, I don't know. This is just a, a, a strange craft that doesn't go anywhere and later on actually just ends up losing time, especially when you compare it to shears. So if you got shears and got the leaves, the way that he uses these iron doors, leaves would have just been considerably faster. Here as well is just a strange thing to do. If he built it out one more, he wouldn't have had to break this three extra stone, which is, I think it's just a careless time loss. Like it's minor, but um, Feinberg, like I'm gonna be going pretty hard in this analysis because Feinberg is competitive, right? Everyone knows him as super competitive and like really gives a shit about his runs, you know? And like time saves are just really important to him. So I'll be I'll be going like harder in this analysis than in most analyses. Like three stone, you know? <laughs> like that's kind of pedantic. Um But I don't it, it was I think it's careless. It's also something, there's something in RSG where um, strats can be almost identical to each other. There can be two things that kind of achieve the same um, like essential outcome, but one will be safer than the other. So when he breaks this, lava is just strange, right? Anyone who's made portals knows how strange lava is um when you break the stone there's this it's not like an rng chance it's just lava can be strange sometimes if this lava happens to tick and spread into this at the same time that he breaks it and he tries to place the lava there's a chance that this spreads in to where he's about to break it let me try and get the frame there's a chance so the water actually spread here and killed the lava but if it went the other way, if the lava ticked in there, this would have turned back into cobblestone and he would have placed this lava and he would have placed obsidian right here, which I think, would it have killed the water? No, the water's above it, but it would have killed the portal. He would have had to restart the portal. Um, so he didn't get punished. This is also like a major thing in RSG, right? Is you can have severe inconsistency if your strats are unsafe or like you just do things that are not very safe like he could have lost potentially like 20 seconds here to that um to just kind of carelessness really um but he doesn't get punished he's in at low two which is fairly standard nowadays um getting low two enters is just kind of standard for top runners um, everyone still plays out like sub 245, T sub 245 is kind of what everyone really goes for, but sub 210 is like the new, this is a good enter kind of thing. They're very achievable. Um, well, they've, they've been found to be very achievable, especially with reset efficiency and optimizations all around, um, multi instance and everything. Getting sub 210 enters is pretty standard. So this is just looking like a good modern run. <clears throat> oh yeah, I could probably look at the F3. Very cool. Is that, that loading it at 3k? Yeah, somewhere around 3k. So it's super close. It's within like several chunks. It's really not far away at all. Checks for terrain, standard. 
It's the biggest time loss in any run is terrain. He checks for the high roll basically. Because of his low nether entry and how close the bastion is, he decides to just start digging through the wall. But obviously digging through walls is not something you ever want to do, but because of the low time nether entry, kind of gets away with it. So if he didn't spawn on the wall, yeah, basically it was like 45 seconds it took just getting out of that cave. So here's where he starts using the iron doors. I missed the first placement, actually. Um, but yeah, you can imagine, like, if he had leaves here, right? Imagine he has leaves instead of these doors. He'd be able to um, do the placement thing on the soul sand, so he'd be faster climbing up this hill and everything. When he's pillaring it up, all of that would have been faster. He'd be able to wall run here rather than doing this. He would have already been gone. Like there's there's probably like five to ten seconds already lost um, that leaves would have saved. And like he plays for content. Like it's an interesting craft. Um, and iron doors aren't that common of a craft. This is just kind of like an experimentation almost, right? It's like seeing what it's like to craft iron doors, which is totally normal. Like. It's a good thing to do. And this is fucking crazy. <laughs> Gets a hoglin and treasure, and that food kind of like carries the rest of the run. Um I I like you can barely even see the Crimson Forest, dude. And but that food carries like the whole run. Um It's really weird. Uh, another thing about Feinberg is that he has really outdated Bastion routes. Throwing gold on the floor here is a major just- it's a waste of gold because you don't get these trades back and it just loses time on these piglins being all the way down here still. So there's minus three gold. There's three trades that he's never gonna get again. Um, Ordinarily, that is. And these piglins are late now. So when he started crafting, these piglins are going to be in the hole slower than usual. So trades in the future are going to be slower as well. Um, no, newer routes do not have pigs trade three gold into the void. Um, but he knows that he does, like, really outdated routes. He, he knows that. But there's even things like this, like the optimization of this wall is something that you can just do after seeing it. So if you dig through here, you only have to dig two blocks and then you just have to place two blocks. It saves like a second or something, but it's just, it's a simple time save. It's a, it's a free second, you know, you can just have that second. Um, and it's safer as well. Uh, something about bastions is not only when you make it w when you make a bastion faster often you make it safer as well um, the faster you get through this wall um, the sooner you'll be safe like somewhere else trading because um, you you risk getting hit from behind by piglins like, it doesn't really happen here because he's using this wasteful route that loses three gold. So basically he can, like, spend as much time as he wants up here. But there's just all kinds of time losses. Losing time on the pigs down there and then losing time on the pigs up here ends up being safe. But that's because the pigs are just late. Like, I don't know, it's just super outdated. Yeah, like... 500 millisecond time saves and everything though, there's really not much left in Minecraft speedrunning. And just speedrunning in general, um, we're looking to get these time saves. Like, Minecraft speedrunning has been so severely, uh, like, unrefined for years. It's only recently that we've finally made, like, so many refinements. That's why you're seeing every category just being, like, all of the times are dropping super low. Um, 
one nine to one fifteen is a sub seventeen now. One sixteen went from a twenty four minute to a sub ten. Uh, pre one nine is basically going to sub twenty. Um, Marco was on sub eighteen pace today with Tower. You know, even though the world record was like what twenty three, twenty four minutes for like a whole year. Um, so we've been like lucky enough to have like minutes of time saves right like 116 has undergone 14 minutes of time save pre-19 has only undergone like what maybe four minutes five six minutes of time save uh 19115 has had i don't know not that much maybe only four or five minutes but um sub 18 pace two days ago yeah We've been lucky enough with that, but now that the categories are actually refined, um, this is what's left. It's like seconds of time saves. That's that's the future. Um, that's how you, like, we're gonna get really, like, truly refined and like, just really nice to watch, super fast runs when we get all of the time saves. And it's incremental time saves like that as well that are important, right? If you save one second ten times, you've saved ten seconds. It's obvious, but that's that's how it works. Yeah, Mario 64. You're grinding for one second time saves. People just underestimate it. They're like, oh, I lost five seconds. It's not a big deal. But if you lose five seconds, like, a lot of times, <laughs> it adds up. And people don't respect that enough. Um, because 116 players, even though the category is really uh, optimized, players are still like pretty undisciplined. Hey, Dowski, to the raid. He's already done with the trading. His route's just good. He get he got loads of obsidian, so he doesn't have to get the other side of treasure. He's just gone. What did he get the other side? I don't know. It was a fast route. Because it's treasure, he just has to send it somewhere. He goes where the terrain is. Standard stuff. It's a fortress. There's a cool little strat. Hides from the skeleton by pillaring one block to the side. But he still needs to get it back on the fortress, so he goes back to that level that he was at so he can get in. Looking for a spawner. I'm not sure if he actually saw one. Oh, nice frame. How do you do it? I don't know. There's a way to go back a frame. I don't know what it is. I don't think he saw a spawner. Mechanics being a factor for world record, yeah. A lot of people have had bad mechanics. And, uh, well, I mean, a lot of people say that Brent has really bad mechanics in the world record. Um, which is fair, because you, you compare, um, compare Brent to, like, Sizzler or something, right? Like, drastically different mechanics. But the difference of Brent is that Brent plays extremely disciplined. Even though he doesn't have Sizzler mechanics, or like Feinberg mechanics, Brent played the most disciplined run on the entire leaderboard. Yeah, Sizzler's world record was made by mechanics, but Brent's world record was by playing extremely disciplined. Um, he did all of the right perfect strats in every situation, and just milked the fuck out of his seed. Um, like, he's one of the only people, he's probably the only person that could sub 10 that seed, I feel like. Um, considering all of the decisions that he put into that run, but we'll get into that later. So you look for a spawner and then drop render. Um, five is good when you're still running around. If you're standing still, you want to drop to four. Like, if you're just camping a spawner, you want to spawn in more strays, um, drop to four. But when you're running around... 
You want to be on five, not only because you need blazers to have a chance to spawn, but also because you need to actually see the spawners. You don't need to camp a spawner and spawnerless, uh, obviously, but when you turn up to a spawner, it just spawns between one and four blazers, right? So obviously you want to at least visit the spawners. So he's visited this spawner, spawns two. He's got heaps of strays already. Visits the second spawner. He could have dropped a four render now. But he checks for more strays. I think he did that on accident, but it was actually sick. Rolling into the blaze. And you can see how the, like, those pork chops carry the run so hard. Because he's out of food now. He's got no food left. <laughs> and that's after eating two cooked pork chops. Doing calculated. Um, this is just sick. Like, doing the calculated here this quickly is actually, like, just a really good decision. Um, you can do calculated on, on one rod. People think, oh, he's leaving on five, but you can, you can start your calculated on one rod because all you're doing is you're getting your, your coordinates. He's probably looking at his nether coordinates. You're, you're getting your coordinates, you're getting the distance of the stronghold, and then you're doing, um, like math off of that. Um... To figure out where to build the second portal. So he can build the first portal wherever he wants. Um, building the first portal. Before you've got all your rods. Is also like almost a time save right. Because. Um, the time that you spend in the portal. Is time that the, the spawner is ticking down. I'm not sure if he's within range of the spawner. He's probably not. But. Um, that is kind of how it works. Is if you're within range of the spawner, obviously it's taking down and overlapping that time waiting at the spawner for uh, blazers. Uh, and also when he's doing the math as well, you can overlap doing the math in your head because you, you can't really pause anymore. Um, you can, but no one really does. Uh, oh yeah, I wanted to do this part as well. So he's got 54.3. Actually, let's get the seed. So I wanted to do like a proper thing on this. Does he put the seed in the description? No, that's epic. Yeah. There's this. Right over here, right? Or am I dumb? Okay, I'm done. You go this way? Mm -hmm. Damn, he sent this? What the fuck is this direction? Oh, let's put it here. All right. So twelve forty-two. So we expect that. God, how the fuck do we do this? Um, what do we expect that to be? Zero point eight, right? Isn't it one thousand divided by zero point eight? Yeah, we expect we expect him to get a zero point eight change. Um, twelve forty two versus twelve fifty. So we we expect a zero point eight change. Um, so let's see what he gets. What the fuck? Is it only showing half of the thing? Oh, that's funny. <laughs> anyway. Um. We expect 0 0.8. So he gets minus 54.3. And then... So is that 0.7? Minus 4... Uh, yeah. And he gets 0.7. What does he correct it? He gets 0.7. Yeah, I know he fucked it up. That's what I'm talking about. That is the whole point of me doing this. Smarty pants. So he gets 0 0.7. Uh, 
Um, so he thinks it's 1428 blocks away. Um, so he's probably thinking of going 178 blocks in the nether. What that means for him is, like, if we think 1428, take away 1250. Oh, these fucking scenes are changing. What is going on? Switch to scene. Ah. What? <laughs> Switching to the Dismium, dude. Show this. Oh, no, that's fine. There we go. Uh, is that good? I think this is fine. I'm gonna reset transform anyway. No, that's fine. Let's run engine stream. Um, so, because he messed up the distance estimation, we expect he's gonna be 178 blocks away from the stronghold. Roughly. Uh, because of this. Yeah. So he thought it was um 1428 but it was actually 1250 so we expect him to be 178 blocks away since he messed up the distance estimation it's especially like more strange that he was short or is it no no that's actually not more strange that makes more sense yeah it makes more sense for him to mess it up in that way since he did it short this is not so the way the distance estimation works is where the fuck am I? Um, streamer mode back on. Browser. What's going on? Let me have my shit. Oh, it locked it from me, dude. Go away. What is going on, man? OBS is so shitty. What is going on? Yep, there's that. OBS, man. Legendary program. All right. Um. So the way distance estimation works is you need to move 17 and a half blocks 90 degrees to your left or right of the angle. Um, and then the distance of your two eye throws, or the, the difference of the angles of the two eye throws, 1000 divided by that difference is the distance of the stronghold like it's exactly how it works because it uses true math it needs to be perfectly accurate for it to be perfectly accurate what's up Feinberg you're getting shit on um you're not really getting shit on I'm shitting on you sometimes not all the time uh right now I'm only explaining distance estimation um yeah so for it to be perfect, because you, you want it to be as perfect as possible for calculated. For triangulation, it doesn't matter too much. Um, because you're just going to run that distance. You're going to throw a second eye anyway, or a third eye rather. Um, but for calculated, you want to be perfect with the distance estimation because you want to eye spy, right? Eye spying is obviously just, it would be an amazing outcome. Um so it's really good for calculated specifically it's it's far more important for calculated to totally nail the distance estimation for the best chance of ice buying um yeah does it a little uh like undisciplined and we expect them to be 178 blocks away you were 0.1 off with the distance estimation find work it was 0 0.8, um, technically, because it was 12.42 away. Um, yeah, and here in chat, people think it's 1,400. It's really hard, though. Um, 
to do calc or to do any form of distance estimation in trees because it's obviously so much more difficult um, to do exactly 17 and a half blocks like f four and a half sprint jumps it's so much more difficult to do that with trees not only that but also when you throw an eye it's going to go into the leaves and everything um, so it's it's already a recipe for disaster just ending up here so it's it's expected that he messes up the distance estimation but still gets it pretty good anyway Yeah, unfortunately doesn't nail it, but it's expected that he doesn't nail it. Because of the circumstances. Because you're a boss. Last boss from here, probably about like one thirty each, so like two twenty. I don't know the situation of beds. Five beds in the inventory. He can four bed. You can maybe look at it as unnecessary to blaze bed, but blaze bedding is always going to be a good idea because um, it just ups consistency. There's obviously a chance if three blaze spawn that you go zero and three. So you want to have that fourth one or a better chance of the fourth one. You know, it's just about making i mean it's not really really even playing for high roll not blaze bidding like it's a it's free consistency but considering he only needed like one or two rods it's probably fine um to not blaze bid 110.9 or something somewhere around there let's check the distance in game Um, we'll need to go back actually. We need to know exactly where to place the portal. Um, towards the thingy? This is gonna be hard. Oh, he's probably gonna do coordinates open, doesn't he? Flash the coordinates. Do it. 208, 136. Let's go there. 208. What, minus 136 was it? Yeah, nice. Alright. Uh, Alright. So he gets 116. So he's 60 blocks better. And it might be because of this ocean. But he ends up being 60 blocks uh, closer than we expected him to be. Uh, we expected 176. Or some, some number around there. Um, just because of the distance estimation being messed up. So he gets a, little, a bit fortunate with that, and I mean the distance estimation here doesn't even matter. Should be able to get the stronghold within uh, two eye throws, three maybe, if you're unsure about yourself. So I mean looking at the dis distance estimation here doesn't really matter that much, because you can just kind of gauge it by looking at the chunks and everything. Um, maybe I'll start it later. The changes by fuckloads, so it's here. Like, loses his angle because of the cave, and I think this is a nervous eye throw. Um, maybe. Yeah, you really expect it to be like really close here. Um, I don't know if that's short or if that's. You know, he goes for the dig. Carl, it depends how confident you are. If you think you nailed the distance estimation, then it's it would totally be justifiable, yeah. Um, we've thought about it. You'd have to be confident in your distance estimation 
you'd have to be confident in uh, your math and you'd have to be confident in your portal snapping because if the portal snaps four chunks over then you're going to be upset about it um you know, we can look at the nav let's look at the nav So it's a small stronghold, doesn't look that big. Two turns right in a library. With a two turns right, I think it was worth checking. But yeah, the library, so yeah. Bottom left looks good because those two things turning right meant that, you know, there's less room on the right for something to exist. Um, so it goes left and nails the nav. It's just a it was free nav, like nothing too complicated. As long as you understand the basics of strongholds, it was, it was free nav. No strange stronghold shenanigans. Carl is he was probably thinking about hunger resetting and then realized he had an apple. That as well. Curling into the middle doesn't matter that much. Obviously, like in set seed, you know, um, we don't pearl into the middle. You can still get the insta perch without a pearl. Forget about Robin Flesh. I mean, DMCA, Monka S. In fight, he could be a bit further back. It doesn't really matter that much. He could be further back. Standard stuff. Let me turn you down. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I'm not lucky, I'm good at the game. Yes! Oh my god! Fuck all the doubters! Fuck the doubters! Rent free! <laughs> um, yeah, I've went over a bunch of this stuff. This will probably end up on YouTube. Um if you've arrived during the stream and haven't been watching since the start it'll probably end up on youtube the, the main things were iron door craft was just strange or unnecessary lost shares not having leaves uh was a time loss later on um bastion was outdated but the trades hit, the chests hit, so that was fine. The fortress was played mostly perfectly. It was, it was basically perfect, really. Um, this first portal is, like, just really good. Building the portal this quickly, um, and, like, just this suddenly was really good. He could have built it up at the spawner. That would have been even better, but having the peace of mind to just get the first portal out of the way ASAP um is really good and then yeah messes up the distance estimation but it was out of his control because of the trees um triangulation sucks we hate trees um yeah and then i mean the third throw didn't matter that much he's left on seven uh he's had one break like no matter what happens, he's going to be fine here. Like this this throw, as long as he doesn't like stick the angle or something, so he just runs at it because you just know it's here. So it doesn't end up losing that much time. Loses maybe a couple of seconds, a few seconds, but nothing too major. Nav was free. End fight could have been further back, but Dragon Perch was pretty well anyway, so it doesn't matter that much. Yeah, and like I, what I said at the start is like 
no one expects this to be his PB for a while. This is just like a stepping stone, you know. It's not like he's going to be hard stuck here for the next number of months. Like, this is just another stepping stone. But there was just a number of things to talk about, so I thought it would be a good, video, a good run to make a uh, analysis on.